very le like I know you guys at different levels so one thing that I really like to do is I just want you to introduce yourself and I want you to tell me something awesome about yourself so I ask that because I what I do normally is I like getting people talking and sharing and then a lot of the time I find that there's usually a pattern that people follow or what happens is that they find oh I did not know that about somebody so I'm gonna start over here so why don't you start off all right, my name is David Ober, and something awesome about myself. Let's see. I uh, played ice hockey uh, my whole life. Learned how to skate when I was five years old. I started playing when I was six. Uh, both my older brothers played, and yeah, so, loved the game of hockey. Awesome. Yeah. You still playing? Not anymore. Too, okay. many, too many blows to the head. <laughs> It's uh, not worth it. <laughs> did you make that decision or did your wife? <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's been rough. But. Awesome. All right. Josh. I'm Josh Lewis. Uh, I guess kind of the coolest thing. Like, I recently had a career change, but for most of my whole life, I uh, climbed cell phone towers. Okay. How high is, this, is an average cell phone tower? Inches, right? <laughs> I'm gonna go back to this table. I'm gonna let you guys decide who goes first. <laughs> or I'm gonna let, apparently, Ginger's gonna decide who goes first. <laughs> I'm Steve Wade, and, and uh, what's awesome about me is I'm married. Oh, oh come on! on. <laughs> That's not. Ginger, there's only one correct answer for you now. <laughs> yeah, right? Now I can't say what I was gonna say. <laughs> because I'm married to Steve. What I was going to say before Steve did what he did <laughs> um, was that I just got to direct some amazing kids in shows, stage shows, which we just wrapped up last night. So if you missed it, you missed something fun. <laughs> yeah. Are you guys posting the video again? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I we, we did it live to Facebook this year, and Facebook is being cantankerous. So we'll work it out, we'll figure it out, and it will be posted out there for... Awesome. Yeah. I'm Jeannie Ippolito, and I guess all I can think of is last summer I took my kids on an epic train trip from here to California and back again, so it's Very um, nice. I actually, uh, awesome. there was a time, and we, we have been here probably four or five years, I wanted Jeannie to say her last name just so I knew how to pronounce it properly. <laughs> yeah, can you say it again? I think. It's, it's Ippolito. <laughs> Ippolito. Ippolito. Not Ippolito. Yeah. Like, I said every version that was wrong. <laughs> it's so I finally... Like, I, had to, I had to learn a song. Do you want to hear my song? Absolutely. All right. I-P-O-L-I-T-O. Ippolito. <laughs> That's, That's amazing. Awesome. And that is now going to be on the video. That's why I said yes. Awesome. <laughs> Jim Hertzler. And uh, I'm a cowboy fan. We can pray for you. <laughs> I don't, do we have any Eagles fans here today? Maybe you. Yep. I got to sit next to her oldest son watching the last Super Bowl, which was really, really, really fun. So. I'm Henry Berry. I am originally from Buffalo, and I am a Bills fan. It's and I am not alone in this church. No, we're not. There's like this mini Bills Mafia that goes on in the church. So. We have no broken tables, though. <laughs> but is it yeah. Kirk? Yeah. Kirk is a Giants fan, though, right? Oh. Kirk. Yeah, no, he's a Bills fan. Is it the Bills? Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, I knew Jeremy Kirk. Walker. They're both Bills fans. Gotcha. Yeah. I knew it was New York. So I need to know your name, and I want you to tell us something awesome about yourself. Uh, my name is Steven Brosey. I don't know if it's about myself, but there are 
at least at least two others that bear my name, <laughs> and two of them <laughs> we bank it, we have an account at the same financial institution. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah, so they don't deposit, you don't deposit money in their accounts, do you? No, I use my middle initial. Got it. One of them spells it with a V. Okay. So. It, so you can break that apart. I, yeah. Very cool. All right, so what stood out about this week's meeting, or this week's uh, reading? When you guys did your reading this week, like, what kind of jumped out at you? My book stole a box. So. Book in a box. All right. This week was this week's chapter. Chapter was about why lead like Jesus. So, what jumped out this week to you, or even just that question? What like comes to mind when you think about that? I think uh, towards the beginning of the book, looking back, like you think about uh, role models and leadership, you know, experts or whatever. I didn't ever fully realize the example that Christ set as a leader and uh, the influence that he had. So um, when you think of, you know, leadership role models, you think of worldly, but um, it was it was an interesting journey going through the book of viewing it as Christ as the example and the, and the, the ultimate model. Um, I think that was the biggest difference for me. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I didn't acquire a book yet, but I'm reading through Matthew, and uh, what stuck out with me is service, <clears throat> service, being in service, as well as teaching, being a servant, serving others. And it just kind of really stuck with me that, well, healing the, the poor, or healing and serving the poor, and giving instruction to his disciples to do uh, taking of the homeless and the widows and the widows and the homeless. So you saw Jesus giving direction for those to serve. Correct. And serving. Answer. What's the most humble act of like service service that Jesus did? And it talked about it in the book a little bit. Wash the feet of the disciples. Washing the feet of the disciples. Who would if, if I asked you right now to do that with each other? I'm seeing funny looks. Right? <laughs> All in a day's work. All in a day's work. <laughs> you're, you, you're not getting paid for it this time. <laughs> you and Ginger have known each other a long time. All right. It, it's there's a, a a bit of discomfort there. Right? Last year, Kirk taught at um at Awana. Were you, were you there that that, that day? And uh, he he texts me and and um and John Walsh and says, Hey, Matt, we're going. He's gonna he's gonna be teaching on this. Um, Matt, I need you to wash John's feet. My initial reaction was, oh. <laughs> and I appreciate that John will pre-washed his feet for me, and more open toes or open shoes because I'm like, okay, there's like, there's that line, but I had that, and I'm like, Jesus did that, and he voluntarily did that, in a complete and utter act of just humility and service to somebody else. And like, can we do that? And it's just something that really jumped out at me, like this this week's reading. The other thing that jumped out to me was, if you were going to give a speech and all the people you care about are there, what does that look like? What would you say? Um, and it's one thing that for me I've always thought about is like, what's my life mission? All right, I'm getting. I, I saw they referenced halftime. I'm getting close to what I believe is halftime of my life. I'm, I'm getting close to forty. And what what? in that shift from to, to relevance, okay? That shift into that different mindset. And that's, I think God has been teaching me that over the last few years and like, what, like there's just been this transformation and this, I'm looking at things a lot differently. So what I'd like you guys to do is I'm a very big small group person 
I think that it's important that you guys break into small groups and to be able to have some of these conversations. Um, I'm going to ask this table to jump over with he over here with this group. I'm going to ask you guys to talk. And actually, Steve, would you mind jumping back with them so we have four and four? And I'm going to ask you guys to have a conversation at your tables. And I'm going to give you a couple questions um, that I want you to talk about. Question one is you guys have been here for five weeks, all right, or the class has been going on for five weeks, and as you've been able to attend, you've been here. And I want to ask, where have you grown the most over the past five weeks? What has God teaching has God taught you in the last five weeks? And the second one <clears throat> is what has God revealed to you of an area you need growth as a leader? I will tell you one thing that I struggle with big time. I talked about it in the parenting class a year ago. I typically, being ex-military, I, I react to things. So I receive information and I'm like, hey, let's go and charge this way. And I, But sometimes I don't respond. I don't take the time to sit back and go, all right, what's going on here? Find out all of the things that are going on, and that's kind of where I go. That's something that God has had on my heart a lot. It's, it's at home as a spouse. It's at home as a father. It's at work. You know, I supervise people, and I give direction. I give directors to the direction to leaders on different ways to go. So it's something that, that I've been working on, and reading this is, am I leading the way that Jesus wants me to lead, or am I leading organizationally? And that's... That, that's not okay if I'm not doing the first. So take five minutes, talk amongst your groups. This can be a small group, this is a smaller group. So there might be a little bit more vulnerability. If somebody needs tissues, just wave at me and I'll bring you tissues. <laughs> Yes, I could just go with that. Let's just letting more people help. You know, growing up, asking for more. And every time I hear it, it's we like the guy that created so this. Actually, I was my like drama role, but like I'm actually doing my setup in the past for this year. I'm trying to be the person who stands back and says, "You do this." Here's let me show you what he's done here. Just stepping back. It was like St. Louis Rams. And, uh, trying to take that step back in and help somebody else. Um, yeah, pretty, you 
know, every time you hear it, you feel that. Up on that it's like yeah. accomplished. Or because you're constantly yeah. changing yourself. It's like you understand yeah. yourself yeah. better. You know, it seems like, like, like a mind shift. When you put it in the context of being a Christian, it's a good act of service, so I get more coffee. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate it. You're welcome. <laughs> Matt, what we're doing right now is uh, a small group, so you can. I, you're being waved. You're being invited. That's a great act of leadership, Ginger, right there. <laughs> Come on in. You guys have two questions right now? Just a good yeah. reminder. Okay, yeah, cool. They will brief you. So we're into the, what were the questions again? So right now, Matt, what we're talking about is where have we been the most since class started? Since class started. Yeah, so Steve and I kind of shared about yeah, like the way always kind of letting people help us. And giving them what they need to know what, so they can do what they need to do. Yeah, that's, um, that's a nutshell. And Jeannie was getting started. I was just yeah, saying that when um, I've always out. kind of tended to stay away from leadership roles because I focus more on me, you know, about yeah, yeah, about my own about abilities or disabilities. Um, leader, but just as we go through the book, as you look at Jesus, like he was more like of, it wasn't about him. It was about pulling up the people around him. And I think that's something that maybe I had always looked at, like, oh, well, I'm not good enough for that. Somebody else is better than that. And then yeah, even um, just in my roles, really I'm like, well, it's not really about me. I mean, I think a good leader is the one that goes and it's it's a complete servitude where you're just, it's not about how far can I get up the ladder, how far I can be the best at it. It's about how how can I help all these, uh, you know, and that is what a leader, leader has to lead something. Like, you're not just yourself. It's not like you've achieved. It's like you're getting, you know, I think is what you're seeing other people achieve, like that you're able to help them and be a part of them. I think that this study has kind of helped me shift that and be like, well, maybe I'd be a little more willing if I'm not thinking about it's me, it's about using God's abilities and helping other people to step up. I mean, I'm sure there's leaders who like to be, I want to be in charge, I want to be the one that does everything. I'm like, no, that's for me, I'm like, it's more of I want to see other people rise above me. I want to see people go help other people. It seems easier to do it sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's not about me. I'm not the focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Else, yeah. I think um, that's something I've. I guess I've learned, and yet yeah, I can still. In, uh, I can still grow in like that, and that whole kind of changes everything. Um, Maybe I'd be a little more willing been, to uh, step out in faith because it's not about me anymore. It's about mm-hmm. what Christ is doing. And, mm-hmm. So that part is there, but mm-hmm. what I've really um, focused on yeah. was the family. Best you know, um, I said that and leading my, my life father had made a comment to me. Being weird. Uh, and officially now we have a two He meant it for encouragement. Our youngest is two but one, he didn't so. know who I was. Um, yeah, two and one, you know, my so mother it's, knew. It's, uh, as you know, it's, it can, it's busy, so I think uh, I've grown the most. And I'm great to orient. Orienting. And um, I yeah, always had. Life. A certain heart. heart. It all starts with food. How to Even when I was little, I wake up and just I focus on me. What can I do? This. And set set my heart and my mind. Even in a right. work situation, um, I see the right away. The bottom end of importance for success. But even when I do stuff, really, what would what job is more important? You know, yeah. Sitting or, hey, at a desk you know, me or, and you know, doing the bird paperwork. Right. Sitting at a desk no, and running a company follow, with bursting yeah, pains up. Jesus. What is most important? Everything, yeah, every little detail, well, is actually important. important. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, some um, yeah. I don't mind helping so other people. Is, you know, what but is the way God they to react you to it is so. Well, upsetting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's the harder question. That's the harder question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, but I still want to serve. It's a big word, but patience. Um, one job um, that I was at. Patience in my job, patience at home, <laughs> patience with the kids. I told somebody, um, this is what the boss wants to hear. And what that really looks this like. This is what she wants to hear. I'm learning to, I'm emotionally driven. I'm and, emotionally well, driven. I worked at Rockville Square um, in Maine. So understanding that and I about said, myself. Sure, I'm once this trying to check one in the morning. This slower when approach doing the to trash process route. things, pick out things, to react or emotional attention, emotion to charge, but to so, take the um, time and patience to process. He got back to the office, so I did, you know, and I said, words out, this needs done, react, this needs 
check it down. She was like, no. That, work at home. that guy just... Like he took it. He took it all in, be more patient and, and it made him look much better so than. I like to attack them, so. Okay. Sometimes I have trouble letting that fact go. Mm -hmm. But I encourage someone or set somebody up that they can improve. I work at it, but that's more and control. I work at a butcher shop. Right, and the other, oh, he's out, working on the kill floor. He actually it. demonstrates mm -hmm. leadership by working with the people. We try to fix Not things. sitting in the office all the time. We look at the things that even though he has that fix. Right. task <laughs> to do. <laughs> I'll stop. Well, I'm going to talk about that, Josh. Because I really like that you I'd said say that. I'm just more conscious of your mentality. Leadership, leadership opportunities, things like that, and like stuff that you know I wouldn't have thought of in the past, mm -hmm. or I, or I would avoid out, just because I'm a, a father. My nature is uh, I'm more of a introvert. Reactive. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Not mm -hmm. one that I want to put myself out back. there. I'm mm -hmm. content to go to work and I would hunker work down at my desk and, yeah. and do my <laughs> job. Um, I you usually know, react recently a customer came in and asked me to do a presentation and I'll be like normally I'd be like uh, <laughs> like normally I well and I'm not and I'm not saying I was like not dreading it. I was not, not dreading it, but at the same time I was just like, no, you know, maybe this is an opportunity to, you know, show my leadership within the company and you know what I mean? Like I wouldn't have had that perspective. I would have just been uh, now, you know, yeah. but you know, yeah. again, instead, it's like, well, no, you know, it's an yeah. opportunity to like put myself out there. Always, I was taking forever to show like that I am and my wife a leader. You know, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, like I said, just <laughs> made me think about yeah. stuff, made me, like, made me more conscious of my actions, and, have, you know, maybe how I react to do that. Absolutely, yeah, I did that. Give you guys one more minute. The next, oh, a minute to this I was going to say, if you don't have work to what do, what has God you're, revealed you're to you? <laughs> 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 All right, if you didn't finish, you're going to have to reveal yeah, it to the whole growth. class. Oh. No, I'm kidding. Revealed what? Um, for growth. For growth. Like, where do you need yeah. to grow? You have a girl boy. A girl boy. You have a girl boy. It's been growing for me for a while. But it's kind of kicked me in. It's a daily being in the world. So, so there are yeah. mornings I get up and I have that time, other times I don't get up as quick as I should, <laughs> but then uh, one of my breaks I usually Ours sit somewhere by myself, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so I try to be in the Word, I actually have a Bible at work, so I, for me, it's, take the time to do the relationship part. <laughs> well, because yeah, it took time. Like, just take time. Turn around. I'm a doer. Yeah, yeah, I'm a doer. I'm a doer. I'm not taking the time. Okay. The B part. What are you guys talking about? Let's start off positive. positive. Minute. <laughs> Where have you guys grown? You guys have been here for five weeks. Again, it's a journey. Where have you seen growth in your own, in your lives? As leaders, servitude mentality. Tell me about it. <laughs> well, I mean, certainly not there yet, but uh, yeah, just trying to, like I was telling these guys, it's like, funny as it sounds, like WWJD, like, you know, in certain situations, I'm like, how would Jesus react to this? How can I serve my wife? And that's kind of where my focus is at right now. Yeah. One step at a time. Um, yeah, how can I serve in this situation? So this is a recognition that you need to grow in that area, yeah. and you're working on it. Yeah. Excellent. What else? What else did you guys talk about? I can't remember. <laughs> um, well, I was just sharing about you know, when the leadership roles that we're in, it made we being Steve and I. Um, it just occurred to me to to take the time to reach out to people to see what they need to do the job they need to do. 
or the thing that they volunteered, like with, with chat. People have volunteered to do things with us. We'll check in with them. Do you need more training? Do you know what you need to know to do what you need to do? Um, instead of saying, great, we're glad you're doing that. Go figure it out. <laughs> you know, so supporting them in that way. And it's happened with a drama, too, with the moms. I get lots. I mean, couldn't do it without the moms, you know, four and in hours. So just what do you need to know? There's new ones coming in. I forget what the new ones don't know because I've been doing it for 14 years now. So, um, yeah. So you're transitioning into a development of leaders. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And understanding that more. Awesome. Yeah. Josh, you said something about being a fixer. I heard that. I may not have gotten the entire context of that. Who in, who in this room would say they're a fixer? That they see an issue and they just go and try to fix it. <laughs> okay, tell me about that. Why do you do that? I don't necessarily trust people to do it right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you know if you do it, it's going to be done right in the way that you want it to be done. Yes. Okay. Who else does that? I do it all the time. Okay. What's the shortfall in doing that, though? You don't give other people a chance to serve. They, they don't get a chance to, to serve. Don't get a chance to grow. What else? Burn yourself they, out. They don't learn how to do it. Burn yourself out. They don't learn how to do it. I, when I was working in emergency management um, about probably 10 years ago, I had a, a guy named Devin uh, that I worked with. We became friends and everything. And he always said about building capacity. Um, and that's something that's very, very, very important to me is because, like, in my role at work, if I'm doing the work that I hired them to do, do I need them? No. No, I don't. I really don't because I'm doing their work for them. And also, I look at it from a, a compensation standpoint. I mean, typically the boss gets paid more, mm -hmm. and if I can have this this standard of work and this work done at a lower rate, that, that just makes good business sense. Okay, so I want to, like, and also, no, like, having read through this, building capacity is really, really important. All right? And it will also take the burden off of you to have to do everything. Um, because at some point, all of us are going to be gone. And then we've created, instead of a single point of success, we've created a single point of failure. I left the United States military 10, 13 years ago. The United States Army is still standing. They're still going along. <laughs> I was a blip, if that. I don't even know if I registered, apparently. But they're still going. What else did you guys talk about? You're not as good now that you're not in. What's that? You're not as good now that you're not in. I appreciate that. <laughs> you get a gold star. <laughs> no, um, I grew up, um, My we have a family uh, business. My dad started in 1989. And... Um, there's five of us kids and we're all involved, so we've been trained, if you've ever heard of the phrase, delegate to elevate. So we've been, we've been coached to always work yourself out of a job. Now it makes, it makes sense in what we do because um, delegate to elevate means the tasks that you have, you're delegating, you're teaching, you're training for others to do, and then because, because your tasks are now delegated out, you can elevate to... Um, a higher level for the organization, um, but in in this sense, it's it's um, you can go far, but if you're by yourself, are you really accomplishing anything? Um, if you're Maxwell says, if you're I think it said it in the book too, but if you're if you think you're leading and you no one's following you, then you're just out for a walk. Um, so and I think that all plays into that. That's right. Thank you. What else do you guys talk about? Where do you need to grow? Where are you still identifying as somewhere you need to grow? That's a hard question to share with the bigger group. For me, it's uh, continued self-awareness um, that I'm gaining and trying to continue to understand myself so that I can um, lead better in my work, but but more importantly, lead better at home. Okay. Um, so I think of uh, patience is definitely one of them that I need to um, really work on, and patience in just not getting worked up too easily. You know, whatever whatever that is. If it's you know, I I can be in control of myself. So if if my wife and I are in a heated conversation, I can 
by how I respond and how I emotionally, you know, am charged, I can steer that conversation in the right direction. But many times I don't because I react, you know, um, negatively and it just throws gasoline on the fire. We all are carrying around two buckets. One's filled with water, one's filled with gasoline. So every conversation or every conflict or every little fire that you run into, am I, by my actions and my words, am I pouring the gasoline on the fire and making it bigger or am I putting, pouring water on that fire and putting it out? So I can be in control. So self-awareness there to say, slow down, process more, and uh, react appropriately to lead whatever is going on. Awesome. That's great. See, Kirk, Kirk and I had a conversation about that about five or six years ago. And he looked at me and he said, you should talk to your wife about that, about how you're feeling. And I looked at him in that moment and I was like, I did not want to hear that. <laughs> but we're in a room and I can't... <laughs> we're actually in Mackenzie's room. Mackenzie's room, we're having small group time. And he said that to me and I was like, I don't want to hear that and I don't want to do that. That was my immediate reaction. But it sparked a conversation, of inti uh, an intimate conversation with me and my wife. So if you haven't had that conversation with her, I encourage you to do so. The same way Kurt Trout challenged me, and you're probably looking at me like, do not want to do this. <laughs> All right, what else? Where else do we, have we identified where we need to grow? And if you didn't get a chance to talk about it at your table, if you're feeling comfortable, please share. Being more, oh, as Matt, Matt said, he's an invert, so am I. And depending on the situation, I can be outgoing. But I need to... Um, we had that test last week, and I heard it with, with different names to it, and I can be outgoing. But when I'm outgoing, it's... A social level that is in a large group and not... I'm one of those that have very few friends, and so when I'm out, go, out outgoing, it's not, it's just being social and not getting in depth, and I need to uh, find people, and I need to be in a group where I can be in depth as a, a relationship. So one area you need to grow is in-depth relationships. Yes. As in a man's group or even in a small group. And I said something to Joe a couple of times and he didn't get back to me. Okay. But I need to be in a group. I'll follow up with it. I know I need to be in an accountable group. Okay. Accountability is important in leadership. It's very important. Who are you accountable to? All right. For me, it's been the elder board. That's been huge for me since, I, since I've joined that. And we take time to have those conversations of, where are you struggling? What is God teaching you? When I, I practice with Joe probably like once every couple months. He asks me two questions. What are you reading and what is God teaching you? Every single time. It's an accountable relationship and I appreciate that. The other thing, and Jeannie, I'm gonna pick on you for a second. Focus. I think you mentioned something, you, when you were sharing, you were talking about um, why you avoided leadership, being a leader, and it's been really cool because, like, Jeannie's somebody that, like, had my youngest daughter when she was really itty-bitty, and, like, still maintains a relationship with her, and you're a big part of the reason, like, that we're still here, actually, because of the way that, like, you loved on Mackenzie when we first started attending, so thank you for that. But I've also gotten to see you grow over the last five years serving in Awana. So can you tell us about that if you feel comfortable or you can say, go like this at me and I'll stop talking. <laughs> so what do you want me to, <laughs> what do you want me to share? Like the, 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 the transformation you've been on in the last five years oh. and, and, you, and your focus on leadership and why you get it versus now, like why you are more. Um, I guess it, you know, why I didn't, that, you know, you, you judge yourself based off of other people. I'm not this enough. Somebody else is better. I have, I'm an introvert. I have social anxiety. I have all these things that would stop me. Um, 
And then over the years, and even with experience and age, you know, even in my job especially, I noticed that you kind of work yourself, you, you're not allowed to stay at this level. Like, you're like, Jean, you've been here 15 years, you have so much more. It's almost like people, you're, you're kind of forced into a role. And that's the same thing, even with Awana, um, working with Awana, you've been here the longest, you know, you know, so you kind of, by nature, have more experience than the other people and they naturally will look up, start looking up to you and it's like you, you can't just stay even though my comfort level is to stay to myself. Um, and uh, I guess, and we were talking about the book, like what I've learned in the last few weeks um, is just about how it's not about me as a, as a leader, I don't focus on myself, like what I'm, I'm so good at this. It's more about like the other people, like leaders take the others and they push them forward. Even if that means that you work yourself out of a job. And it's sometimes that's scary. Like even my children, I'm working myself out of a job. They don't, you know, you want them to need you. And then you realize they don't really need you like you want them to anymore. So you're, or even I'm, I'm a nurse. So my, my new nurses that are brand new, I know I look at them, I'm like, you're better equipped. I'm like, am I going to stop you because I want to maintain my job? Am I going to keep my kids little so I can keep my job? Or am I going to push them? And it comes less about me and more about the people that I'm trying to, you know, find joy in pushing forward. And maybe that makes me a little more willing to step out and be in leadership, knowing that it's not about me. It's about helping other ways that I can even help other people progress beyond myself. It's been really cool too, like just watching the other Awana leaders like follow your lead, and the way that you, the way you do things. No, it's it's been really cool. It's been cool getting to see that. So we talked a little bit about conflict that came up. Who likes conflict? <laughs> My man. Right here. Who avoids conflict? Who avoids conflict at all costs? <laughs> Why do we avoid conflict? Not comfortable. It's uncomfortable, yeah. Okay. Why? Why is it uncomfortable? Because most of the time when I speak, people don't take the time to listen. They don't? They'll cut me off in the middle. Interesting. Then I have, and I know I have, if I'm speaking to somebody and they cut me off, I lose train of thought. Then I have to go back to the beginning because I, it's something that I had since I was little. Keeping, when I was interrupted, I just drew a blank, I didn't know where to pick up at. So I started the beginning, and then they get irritated. But if you want to interrupt me, <laughs> then save it for later. Or give your point of view before I'm ever finished. So you interact with people who listen to respond rather than to listen to retain. Is that fair? Or, or, or that's something that just, that, that breathe, that, that just, it impacts you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ginger, Steve, and Jeannie, ask your kids what rule number four is in math class, they'll be able to tell you. It's number four is listen to what others have to say. I have kids that have left for two or three years and they still know number four because they hammer it into their heads. Not literally, but I tell them like that's a very big thing. It's a trigger for me. It is a huge trigger for me. I've actually, my boss was actually like questioning me and asking me about something my three bosses ago. And literally just kept telling me what I, why I did stuff. You know what I did? Walked out. And then she pulled me in her office and said, I, I looked at her and I said, if, if you want to hear, if you want to hear what I have to say, you can listen. It is a, that's a trigger with me. It is, because my mom did it when I was a kid. It was, it, it is, it's, it's your, your, you're putting your value over somebody else. So that's why you avoid conflict. Why else do we avoid conflict? No, sometimes I avoid conflict. What's that? I avoid conflict because in certain conflicts, I Okay. I don't like that part of me, so I just steer clear. Yeah. Okay. You steer clear because of the way you go about it. I was going to say about the same way. Like at some point, I you lose your ability. It, what, intentional was good, God honoring, and then all this, especially in marriage, all of a sudden it goes from a like God honoring, let's talk about this, to <laughs> angry, and you're you feeling like you've done something wrong, like you've. Now you're in the wrong, you're on the wrong side versus you were right in asking, but so I, it, same thing the way you handle it. I don't yep. I don't like that. Yeah. Why should we have conflict? Well, there's good conflict. 
Tell me about him. I mean, if, if, if you want to take two individuals, if you have if you have a problem, and I don't mean just arguing for the sake of arguing, but there's a there's a definite disagreement, or there's a definite there's a definite impasse. You need to hash things up. You know, whether it's family, whether you work, regardless, you need you need to hash things up. Um, sometimes people need to be corrected. You know, not that you always have the answer, but you you everybody finds themselves in a situation, whether you're dealing with kids or adults, that the other person needs correction or guidance or whatever you want to call it. But and that's conflict. Okay. So it's not always a bad thing. It can be bad if you don't handle it correctly, <laughs> but it's not always a bad thing. Going back to these emotions, right? Yeah. What else? Why else should we have conflict? It makes us grow. Makes us grow. Tell me about that, please. <laughs> well, <clears throat> let me go to the uh, arena of sports. If I'm going to play a good team, mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be conflict on the field. Yep. And uh, the more conflict I have and, and I don't run away from it, the, the more I grow. Thank you. So I, when, communication's a big thing, right? I am, who thinks I'm a direct communicator? Who spent time with me? I see Ginger laughing, Jeannie, Steve, I'll Judd. say that and I haven't. You haven't, all right? <laughs> <clears throat> who thinks I'm an aggressive communicator? That'd be harsh. What? It might be too harsh. You, okay. But again, or is the, there's a difference there, right? Dur is direct a good thing? Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know exactly what you're getting with direct. Who likes who likes the passive aggressive communicator? Oh, no. <laughs> right? I, I had an employee that started with me about four a little over four years ago. And twenty-four years old, hired her, and she comes in and she like Literally, I think was like just scared of like everything, but was working in like a more confrontational job. But I saw that there was potential there, and I and I, and I said yes, and I hired her. And the first six months, she said it was like she didn't know what to do because she'd never been around somebody that had been a direct communicator. And pro and this year, promoted her to a supervisor. And my conversation, like she said to me, she's like, you know, the first six months here were like I, I didn't know what to do. I've never been around somebody that's a direct communicator. It's kind of refreshing because you know what you're getting, all right? And it's really important that you're direct and then when things go wrong that you have the conflict, okay? Now, I can be when I want something done or something's not done right, I can shift into that aggressive mode and that's quite frankly not right, all right? So I need to, and I do it at home, I quite frankly, I think at times I've done it here, I've done it at work and I have to then tuck my tail between my legs and apologize and ask for forgiveness. All right, we've all done that in our lives. We've said things, or I've been passive aggressive and need to apologize for that part. So conflict is really important in our growth to walk like Jesus. So if you have your Bibles, I'd like you to please open to Matthew 26. I wanna go through that, that's really important. Uh, there's two, two different things where Jesus is confrontational in the Bible. And Ginger, if you have it open, would you mind doing reading 26, 20 through 25, please? Okay. Matthew 26. I'm not making you do sword girls, so. <laughs> Matthew 26, and what were the verses again? 20. 20 through 25. I start, we, one of the kids did that, and I was like, I like that. So now we do sword girls, and I say draw swords to go. <laughs> it's really cool. All right, 26, 20 through 25. Yes, thank you. All right. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him, one after the other, Surely not I, Lord. Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go, just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus answered, Yes, it is you. Thank you. Jesus, what does he do there? Yeah. 
Is he confrontational here? Tells it straight. Tells it straight. Very direct. Tells Judas, right? He's talking with Judas and said and pretty and says, I know what you're about to do. Does he hide from the conflict? No. He comes right at out. But the other thing that he does with Judas, because he's now telling you, I know what you're going to do. He gives Judas an opportunity, doesn't he? To rethink what he's going to do. Do we do that with our kids? Do we do that with our spouses? Do we do, we do that here? When we see something going on, when we see something, something that's about to happen, or do we not address it because we want to avoid conflict? Jesus gives a really great example here. He gives a really great example of going, uh, of being direct and, addre- and addressing what's going on and what's go- about to happen. Steve, do you still have it open? I do. Okay. Steve, would you mind going to later down in the chapter where uh, and reading 31 uh, through 35, please? Then Jesus told them, This very night you will all fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. I tell you the truth, Jesus answered, This very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. So what happens here? Hmm. What does Jesus say to Peter? Engage the conflict again. He says, I know what you're going to do. Gives him an opportunity here. Now, obviously, does Peter do it anyway? <laughs> yes. Yeah, he does. Okay. Jesus addressed him immediately. He knew what was going to happen. All right. Does Jesus forgive Peter, though? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. We see it later on. Peter is a key figure. In our walk. He is. But Jesus addressed the conflict directly. So I know conflict is not fun. And apparently I just hit play. There we go. Started reading. So I challenge you. Why lead like why lead like Jesus? You may not get to that part of the conflict if you deal with it early early enough. Alright? So it's not festering, it's not stewing and everything like that. Alright? And that's a challenge for me, too. I do the same thing at home. You can go talk to my wife. She'll tell you. I can be a knucklehead sometimes. Or you may have seen me and Lauren get into it. So, Any questions about conflict? Anything you'd like, you would disagree with or would like me to clarify? Yeah. Last small group activity. In there, in, our, uh, in the book this week, the question was, if you were standing in front of everybody to give a speech, what would you say? What would you say to those people? You can take it a different way. I'm always, I, I think of what do I want to be remembered for? I have really three, three goals in life. Love God, love my, love my wife, love my children. And if I'm doing those three things well, then I'm doing other things well. So I'd ask you guys amongst yourself to have that conversation with your small group, with your small group here. Either you can talk about it from the speech, from that, what, are your, what do you want out, out of life and your leadership. But take five minutes, I think. I would freeze up because I don't want to speak in front of crowd. <laughs> <laughs> so you want a smaller crowd. Josh is like, give me a smaller crowd. 90% of you people out of here. <laughs> Large groups. Matt Wayne, you will, because you arrived late, you will be giving the speech in front of the class. Just so you know. <laughs> I gotta go. You gotta go. I gotta leave. <laughs> 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 Bye, Matt. After.
to worship, you get the whole church then. <laughs> You can go first. I'll be running down the road here. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying that uh, Winston Churchill, mm-hmm. remember his speech? So gave what, what was the second option? Yeah, what, uh, I'd rather go into like, what you uh, like uh, to be remembered. You know, our, what we're doing with our ministry is really wanting to be examples of and encourage people to live every moment for Christ teach your children to do the same. So, like, you know, it's not my life. It's not my life. It's not my gift. It's, 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 it's not. It all belongs to God. And how does should that govern what I do? And I'm teaching them to do the same. And hopefully... I'm doing that so people are like, oh yeah, she's there, or she's there, or she's there, or she's there. whatever it was for God. Is it like giving your own eulogy? Um, Is that the question, basically? Yeah, it can be. I mean, I think he said it. Love God. I agree. I think, love you know, that's love what I would want to say about me. I keep it really simple, so I'm not that smart. So, I just keep things yeah. like yeah. snippets because yeah. I can remember them then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's just like it's the sprinkles on my Sunday. <laughs> We're talking about ice cream now. No. no. What happened? Matt, 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 Matt wants to be known for his guitar for Matt and the Millennials. No. <laughs> Matt and the Millennials. I said pretty much the same thing. Woo! Like, you took all our answers. God, God served God. Good husband. Good father. And then she said, you know, good guitar player. And I said, well, that's just like the sprinkles on my Sunday. Like the, but, but that's the way you lead well. Yeah. That's a great thing. That is a way you lead well. Everybody knows him. Oh, yeah, you're the guy up on the seat. You're the guy. You're the guy up on the guy with the guitar. Please, and then he disappears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's somehow I like. I'll like go out to like drop the kids off, and I'll see him sitting out there. I'm like, Matt, what's up, man? <laughs> I think that's important when a situation calls for leadership. No, that's your point. That was to you. This is really, he's a serious guitarist. Yeah. 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 Sometimes they just wear them around. Yeah. Like, just, yeah, just, 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 yeah. As your shield goes, Matt, you're so cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't think I've ever heard my wife say, Matt, you're so cool. Unless it was said with sarcasm. Yeah. That is on video, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, this is what Sheila would do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I may have gotten which way the head would go wrong, but. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the world is starving. For She's seeing the worst. My wife and I are doing an organization at a church. Everything right, right. falls on leadership. She has a soul. I don't have it's always a heat. We don't have no children. She has medical issues. So, how do I encourage her? Because all she wants to do is go to sleep. She wants to give up. The leadership we have is pretty And you can leave no matter no matter what your job or title. Yeah, I'm good at being work. Yeah. So pray for me and Sharon. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, this class. But yeah, I feel like you can look forward to but I try to encourage her to get up and to go and do things. Well, when I'm not working, we're in debt. So I can't retire. Consciously. Well, look okay, at this way. Is he inviting you to give in? Yes, it was my fault. Our fault. Most of mine. But that is what's happening. When she was growing up, she would meet yeah, with, with some conflict, especially at work, and it's tough because work is houses. family, and family is work, and, and it's not separate. She was going to her time, so report directly church. to my brother Josh. He's and four years old. And something, and that and, uh, was going back to I appreciate him, him because I, I, I try to take brother the and mindset if I think about something more than once, I said, I went to a cop, I'm going to bring it up. I said, something's missing. He 
it's, that means they it's don't an issue. Believe you know, in whether small or big. If I have a feeling about Damn. something, or I'm, or I'm frustrated, and that has to do with conflict, is just bring it up and and to have a sp you, uh, space to be able to do that. Just hey, I thought about this the one. I'm gonna bring it up. You can tell me to, to shut up and turn around, but, nuts. or whatever. But yeah. I got it out. And it, so now you know exactly where I'm at. She can move on. Study on this fair to yeah. teach to so. older ladies. Science. Like so. <laughs> yeah. If I knew. So. Quarter. I try to take that. I think about well, it all the time. I'm going to address it and bring it up. Twice now. <laughs> so I hear the worship band going. One person. What are you? What are you saying? Either light, either mission, or what would your speech be? You can pull it out in speech. Hmm. I think it it's the the balance. Uh, my uh, my grandfather was a pastor. My dad's dad was a pastor for forty years, and uh, at Lebanon Valley Bible over in Anvil, and. and um, he poured everything into the church and the people in the church, but his family suffered. Um, and my dad openly talks about it a lot, um, relationally. And um, they grew up more legalistic. So, it, that, I mean, that's a big deal. So to have balance to say, I mean, the three things that you said. To, it, it's not just one thing to love God and love the church and the church, but to also take that into the family and your spouse and your children um, so that balance I would say balance of those things okay excellent that, that is, that's really important because here's the other thing that we, we tend to forget is when we're here all the, if we're in the church all the time and doing all the things for the church our wife and kids are part of the church and I think we need to remember that sometimes I think that's a great thing because if you are again Balance is important. Why lead like Jesus? Matthew 28, 16 through, through 20. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So the answer, the answer is why lead like Jesus, because that is our great commission. We are here to spread God's word. And how we, how we do it, what we say, our actions, everything like that, go back to that great commission. And if we're leading well at our homes, if we're leading well in church, and in our workplace, our actions... And our words should be evidence of that. Any disagreement? Okay. Steve, Wade, would you mind closing us in prayer, please? Thank you. Holy Father, we thank you for bringing us here together today, and we pray that you will help us each to to learn how to how to lead like Jesus. Guide us uh, each day to to. To lead in our in our own families, uh, at our workplaces, uh, wherever wherever we might be, to put others first, uh, to lead by example, to uh, be a servant. Pray that you will guide us this week as we take this message and live it out. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you.